guys welcome back to my channel it's a girl johnson joy i'm back again with another video like i never left so guys if this is your first time of ever tuning into my channel the only thing you can do to show love and support to me is by clicking on that red subscribe button down below and also on the bell sign so you would be notified anytime i upload a new video and if you're a routine subscriber thank you so much for always coming back to my channel you're simply the best as you keep on showing love to me may god keep on blessing you in everything you lay your hands upon so Let's get into today's video. I'm sure you guys already know what you want to watch. You've seen the title and you've seen the thumbnail. You know exactly what you're about to watch. This is a story time video, like my first story time ever. I've actually talked about this in um in a video on my other channel, Johnson Joy, and you know the channel got taken down due to copyright strike. And I think I've got a lot more subscribers and different subscribers of that. And I, I'm sure you guys are going to hear this. So this is my near deadest. No, not me. <laughs> Not me, a colleagues of mine, and near that experience about HIV. So I'm gonna be sharing this story with you guys and why you need to get your self check to them, why you need to know your status, why you need to let your partner know their status, why everybody just needs to know their status, like in general, and why you should be careful, why you should play safe and use a condom if the need arise. So, guys, let's get into it. As for you guys who doesn't know, some people know about it already, that I was a CNA in my country, Nigeria, before I left for Europe. And I practiced this for some couple of years before I left anyway. Um, I started this a little bit younger, and that was why I was able to become a CNA before I left Nigeria. During this practice, I've seen a lot. I've heard a lot. I've experienced a lot. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of those things I experienced. But... This is one thing that inspired me in sharing this video. I was talking to a friend, I think, earlier 2018, yes. Early 2018, I was talking to her about, you know, my journey so far in relationship with guys and all this stuff. And I told her that at the point in my, at the point in my life, I'd always tell my, a, a guy that is interested in me, like, for you to come, come and even tell me you love me, you want to be with me, before I even think of saying yes. You have to go do your SYZ test. You have to go do hepatitis test. You have to just go do some random test. And she was like, ah, uh kilo leto you like, ah, uh kilo shele now. I said, yes, so oh shele. It was because of something that I experienced, and I don't want such to happen to me. A near death experience that one of my colleagues, you know, almost um got herself into a doom. So it happened. I'm not going to be mentioning him because I don't know how viral this video is going to go over time or over the years. And I don't want to mention the name of that family because they're not going to like it. And also, according to the nursing, you know, ethics, you should keep patient secret secret. So when I say Mr. Philip, you should know that I'm talking about that patient. So there was a man, his name is Mr. Philip. He is, uh, you know, um, our patient. And we have like the family doctor like we attend to the whole family when they have any issues they come to the hospital to do the checkup to collect the treatment and all the stuff so it happens that mr philip was sick and it was brought to the hospital you know in nigeria normally when somebody is sick the first thing you think about is malaria and typhoid malaria and typhoid because of the dirty water because of the dirty environment the dirty food the street food people buy and all the stuff you know some 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 people sell street food they are not really so neat like that but you have no choice than to buy this food sometimes when you're stuck in and you eat this food at the end of the day you drink some water that are not really purified and you get typhoid malaria mosquitoes they are all over the places so when you're sick the first thing they think about is this person has malaria once it's not malaria this person has a typhoid so he came to the hospital he made some complaints and we we're like okay um you know just draw a sample draw a sample for uh, malaria parasite and typhoid we took it to the laboratory and we noticed that yes he had malaria and he had typhoid so we treated him and it was so healthy it was fine and it was discharged i think about after one week or five days i think so so mr philip was discharged in good condition and it was fine but in about three three months time he came back to the hospital again he was so sick and his health has started to deteriorate so uh, we were like ah, what's wrong with this man maybe malaria and typhoid again probably he didn't notice on time and it's enough eating deep into him and you know many people in nigeria they don't care about balanced diet they don't care about eating healthy they care about eating to be filled they care about eating to have strength to face their daily challenges they don't care about you know eating protein eating carbohydrate taking some vitamins nobody care about that in nigeria only few people care about it and also maybe i think 
it is expensive in some instance sha, to get all those food so they don't even worry themselves about it so we think okay maybe he has not been eating healthy his immune system is so down and you know it just um it's something that can occur so we drew a sample for mp and um, typhoid that's malaria parasite and typhoid we did it and we noticed that he has malaria parasite like on the eye side that they also had typhoid so we also noticed that you know his blood pressure are freezing and he also had diabetes during this period because it looks so lean and that was what brought about like could this be diabetes maybe this man is diabetic and that's why you know he's getting so lean and we actually found out that he was diabetic at that point in time so we treated him for malaria parasite we treated him for typhoid we placed him on some drugs for blood pressure he was a retired major as at that time, so it do not it doesn't work. So we told him he just had to take a lot of rest, place him on drugs for diabetes, and all those stuff that is gonna be fine. And this man was actually, you know, getting fine and it was okay. And at that particular point in time, this man actually um had a high in one of the nurses. She is a colleague, but a junior nurse, like a very, very junior nurse at that. And you know, he wanted to have something to do with that. This man I'm talking about should be around 50 something or almost 60 as a thing if he's not over 60 because this is some years back i really can't remember his age so mr philip is like he should be up to 60 as a then and it was having a high in this girl in this nurse and um this nurse should be around 17 yes i think 17 and you know we she and she was like I was like a, you know, this thing that we used to call school father, school mother. So I was like a mother to her in the in the hospital. So anything that's going on, she always confided in me. She always talked to me about it. If things are not going on well, she always come to me first. So this man was like, you know, talking to her, her in others. What's up now? Let's do this thing now. And this man, eh, he wasn't even, even actually talking to her like, let's meet outside somewhere to do this stuff. But he wanted them to do it in the clinic, like in the night. He would like give her the signal like, you know, when other nurses are in the reception, you know, just like come and meet me and see if you want to give me something. Let's just do the, this thing. He just wanted it to be like a one night stand or something. Or probably they're going to meet outside the hospital and everything is going to be fine. But this girl insisted that no, she wasn't going to do that. And um, we actually treated this man and we discharged him. It was better, but not too well. But we discharged him that he should come for checkup, like I think in about two weeks or so. So this man went home. He went home and in two weeks, he was actually fine. But he came back and said, oh, I'm sick. I'm this. I'm that. I'm dying. I'm... And we are like, but your BP is normal. Your sugar level has come to normal, though you have to, man you have to keep on managing it. It's still on drugs. And nothing is wrong with you. But the doctor just like, just place him on total bed rest. We never knew this man came back all because of this nurse. He had he had talked to her maybe outside or somewhere and had asked her, you know, how is the duty for the month? And he knew that at that particular time, this nurse was on night duty. So he came just because of this nurse and was still persuading to have sex with her in the hospital premises. But this girl, um, I was on money duty then. In the morning, she came to meet me and said, ah, don't you imagine what Mr. Philip is saying? He has told me this like about two or three weeks ago. And now he came back again. Look at what he's telling me. And I told her, don't do it. Like, I know sometimes it's not wrong to have a relationship with your patient. Like, if a patient, if a man comes to the clinic, he sees you, maybe he came for treatment, he collects his treatment and it's fine. And at the end of the day, he sees you like he wants to be with you and you guys agree. There's nothing wrong with it. But... I was like, it's not really nice. This man is an old man. What do you want to be doing with somebody who is old? You have a boyfriend. Don't think about the money. Don't think about dating a sugar daddy. Like, just leave him alone. Don't just mind him. And she said, okay, no problem. Thank God she accepted. Thank God she didn't do it. This man stayed in the, in the clinic for about three days. And when he saw that, you know, this girl wasn't giving him attention, he told um, the doctor that he's fine. He'd like to be discharged. And we discharged him. But in about one month time, in about one month time, I know some people will be like, why did it take so long for them to know that he's having HIV? HIV is popular, HIV is common, but it's not something that somebody would just sit up and think about just immediately. There are some common ailments that used to occur in Nigeria. And when somebody is sick, those are the things that they think about first. The cycle is um, malaria, typhoid, diabetes, hypertension, like those are the cycle of things that happen when it comes to infection the things that people would 
first thing about is toilet infection, staphylococcus, um, you know, um, vaginalysis, like just all those things that has to do with in infection, gonorrhea, those are the things people will think about. They wouldn't think like the secondary aspect of it. They would just, you know, think, oh, these are the common things. So nobody knew that this man was HIV positive until after about seven months. The first month he came, about three months time he came again, about two weeks time he came again, and about another three months, I think so, he came again. So this was like a long trade. And this man came, so deteriorated, he was rushed to the hospital, he looked so lean, he looked so dehydrated, he looked really, really sick. And at that point in time, I didn't even know he was HIV positive, HIV positive, but I feared for his life, like, wow. Is Mr. Philip just gonna die like this? Well, you never can tell. Sometimes you 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 have a situation where you put patient at 50-50, and at the end of the day, they survive it. Like I've seen a lot in my life. So that was when the doctor thought of like, could this man be HIV positive? He was to have he was having malaria parasite and typhoid. We treated him, he wasn't fine. He was having diabetes and um, um diabetes and hypertension. He's on drugs, but now it is still on the high side. Now he has cough. Now he's weak. Now he, he has chest pain. At that point in time, he, he, he has lost his appetite. And we had to do an XYZ test. Believe me, when we did it, it was positive. And this nurse that, you know, he was high and wasn't even on duty. And we didn't even tell him in the first instance because, you know, Nigerians now, they would just die of shock. He would have just died instantly. He actually died not too long after he knew he was HIV positive. And I'm going to be telling you the reasons why he died so we didn't tell him immediately we called his wife we told his wife about his health status and his wife was so sad his wife was so downcasted because definitely she has hiv too we had to run the test but i think the doctor did it confidential they didn't tell us anything about it if the children had hiv too or if if um the children were grown up anyway but you know they use the same knife in the house they use the same blade in the house they use some sharp object like kitchen stuff in the house and maybe in one way or the other any one of them might have contracted hiv from him we never can say but definitely his wife i'm sure she didn't escape this so they told the wife about it and they said okay we don't want to tell him about it now we want him to be a little bit stronger and our hospital is not a place where we treat hiv patients so we just you know gave him some first aid and we had to transfer him to um, I think one hospital in Lagos where they treat HIV patients and tuberculosis and all this stuff. So we transferred him there. But I don't know what transpired. I think due to money or some stuff, he wasn't able to collect treatment and they had to take him to the house. And later on, he died. And um, when that nurse, I almost mentioned her name. <laughs> when that nurse came to the hospital and saw the file, ah, Mr. Philip is here again. What is the problem? And I said, check for yourself. She checked it and she saw that Mr. Phillips was HIV positive. She almost fainted. She almost fainted because I think at a point in time, she wanted to accept his offer because of, you know, some little change that she would have collected. And since then, I said, wow, nobody should be trusted. You don't know who is who. There's so many people walking in the street. You don't know their health status. You don't know their, maybe they're HIV positive. Maybe they have hepatitis. There are so many more deadly diseases that are even more than HIV. And they just come to you, you know, you don't have unprotected sex with them, you just jump on bed with them and do your stuff with them. At the end of the day, just for one night stand something, you get yourself into an everlasting sadness. Because having HIV is not the end of the life. Having HIV is not as if you are going to die soon. But you must manage that situation. You must keep on taking drugs for the rest of your life. It's not something I'm going to be happy about to have, but it's something that when you have it, you're, you're not going to die. I heard the testimony on Lily Mutma's channel when she was interviewing a lady who has been HIV positive for about 20 years now. She's married and her spouse does not have HIV. She has 
children, I think. I think about two children. I don't know how many children, but I think more than one child. And the children are not HIV positive. So you can be HIV positive and also get married. You can be HIV positive and still, and still move on with your life. You can be HIV positive and you still not be able to transmit, transfer it to your partner or transfer it to your children. You can be HIV positive and you still live long. As far as you take your drugs, you eat LD, and you're going to be fine. But it's not something that you want to have. It's not something that you will be happy about it. It's not something that, you know, you want to tell the world, oh, I'm HIV positive. So that is why you need to know your status today. So you don't transfer it to somebody. That is why you need to know your status today. So you don't kill yourself. So you don't die. Mr. Philip died because he didn't know he was HIV earlier. And um, he died. Maybe he would have been able to prevent it. I think his wife, his wife is still alive to today, but I think she, she was, she was lucky enough to have known a little bit earlier. And now I think she's on drugs and she's fine and everything is fine with her. So this is all about what I have to talk about. I'm not really good in story time. Maybe I was just talking like, <laughs> maybe I was just talking like my normal video. Yes, but it is a story time anyway. I like to know what you guys think about this video and I like to say go check yourself I think the last time I checked myself was 2019 when I did an HIV um, HIV test and it was negative and yes I did hepatitis 1 and 2 it was negative I did that stuff local cause and all the stuff it was negative I used to check myself like every year this year I haven't checked myself but definitely I must check myself and I know that since then I've not been cheating <laughs> <laughs> I've not been cheating on my man. I don't know if he's cheating, but definitely like I trust him a bit to know that he isn't cheating. And I think he, he, he checked himself also last year. He's not HIV positive. I'm not HIV positive. We haven't HIV positive, but you know, you don't get HIV only through sex. That is something you need to know again. You can get HIV through a lot of, a lot of means, which I'm not going to be talking about in this video. I may do another video to address this how you could contract HIV. Like, even some ways, you, you wouldn't even think about it. You might say, oh, I've not been having sex for three years, so why would I be HIV positive? No. There are other means at which you can be HIV positive. So, go and check yourself today. Go and know your status today. Not just because of somebody else, but because of you. You might think like, hey, if I'm HIV positive, and call, is it not somebody that give it to me? Then if I give it to somebody else, it doesn't matter. But remember, your health will keep on deteriorating. And you might die anytime soon. So if you don't want to die, if you don't want to put other people in trouble, go check yourself. So that's all about today's video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to, you know, hear more story time about this or talk on health and all the stuff, drop a comment in the comment section. And if you have experience, um, a close to death experience like this, drop a comment in the comment section so if you're not subscribed to my channel you know what to do kindly click on that red subscribe button and also on the bell sign if you're a subscriber thank you so much for always coming back to my channel and that's all for today's video i'm gonna see you guys in my next one but before then you all stay blessed